Hey guys, my name is Dylan DeJesus and today I wanted to walk you through the exact setup that I have and use every single day to airbrush custom shoes. I think that airbrushing shoes, if you've never used one before, can seem a little bit daunting at first, but when we walk you through this setup, show you how everything works, hopefully this is something that you guys can start to apply. Maybe these are some accessories you didn't know you might need. And once you have this process even more streamlined and you have just a quick flip of a switch for a couple things and you can start airbrushing shoes more efficiently, that's when business can really start to grow for you, hopefully. First and foremost, let's go ahead and kick things off with the airbrush that I use, the Badger Patriot 105. Now this is the airbrush that I've been using for years and years. If you guys are interested in a really detailed full breakdown on this exact airbrush, go ahead and click on the card on the screen that will throw up there. But otherwise, this is the airbrush that you guys will always hear me recommend to everybody anytime they ask, no matter the budget. It's under $100. You can usually find it somewhere maybe between $70 to $85. It sells out pretty quickly on Amazon, but this is a great airbrush. It's so easy to use. It's so easy to maintain. It's so easy to troubleshoot anytime anything goes wrong. And I have tried a lot of airbrushes over the years and I always end up right back here. Next up, you're gonna need an airbrush compressor. And the one that I've trusted for many years is from a hardware store called Harbor Freight. This is their in-store brand called Centra Nomadic and it is a 1.6 running horsepower compressor. It is super light. It's not that loud. I think it is around $70. So it's a pretty great price. I think that the compressor is a little bit less important than the actual airbrush itself. But anyways, at $70, that's a great price point. Like I said, it's not very loud. Typically I run the airbrush around 30 PSI, maybe 35, maybe a little bit lower depending what I'm trying to do. But this bad boy does get up to 58 PSI. So really, you know, it has multi-use if you were trying to use it for other things also. The exact one that I use has lasted me four plus years and as you can tell, it has been through an absolute beating, but that's pretty good bang for your buck for something that gets used every single day. So a question that we do get about this compressor a lot is that when you're first using it, you might be wondering why it's shutting off. but that's just the auto kickoff system. It realizes you're no longer using the airbrush, so you don't need to turn the compressor on or off. It's just going into a bit of an energy saving mode. So for under hundred bucks, this thing can last you a real long time. So this is definitely my recommendation when it comes to compressors. So if you do plan on using this exact setup with the Badger Patriot airbrush and the Harbor Freight compressor, there is one additional adapter that you do need. Without this additional adapter, this entire setup will not work. So this is extremely important to have in order to connect your hose to your airbrush. Next up, we have an airbrush cleaning pot. And this item is really essential in order to make sure that your process is very streamlined and really efficient. This is really gonna come in handy when you're trying to do simple color swaps or when you're done and you're trying to clean your airbrush at the end of the day. What you're essentially doing here is taking any of the paint that you still have left in your cup, any of your overspray, you're gonna take and spray directly into the airbrush cleaning pot. There's a filter inside so any of the air can get out and exit through there, but all of the paint and all of the liquid is gonna stay inside the cleaning pot. So anytime I'm trying to do a quick color swap, all I'm doing is taking any of my previous color that I have left behind in my airbrush, spraying directly into the cleaning pot, and then I'm gonna go ahead and filter some airbrush cleaning solution directly through my gun and spray that into the cleaning pot also. And do that same process three or four times until you see you no longer have any of that paint residue left behind in your cup. Next up, we have a tabletop airbrush holder. This one's pretty cool. It holds up to four airbrushes, just in case you're running a multi airbrush system. It also comes with this adjustable clamp so you can really fit it to any size thickness table. I actually like this as an airbrush stand a little bit better than the little stand that comes with the cleaning pot. This one's just a little bit more stable because you can actually clamp it to your table. You're not worried about it ever tipping over or anything like that. And because it has that adaptability to where you can fit four airbrushes on here. Pretty cool. So everything that we've talked about already is what I would consider the day one essentials. You need your airbrush, you need your compressor, you need a cleaning pot in order to clean out your airbrush at the end of the day or do color swaps. Everything that we have featured in front of me now is what I always have nearby me anytime I'm airbrushing. These are what I consider really handy accessories. And I figure if they help me, they might be able to help you along the way. Maybe these are something that you can add over time. Maybe you wanna pick and choose what you'd like to use from here. But these are things that I consider really important to me every single day, every time I'm airbrushing. So we're quickly gonna run through each of these. Definitely wanna have some type of respirator or mask nearby. Your health is very important. 
This is an inline moisture trap. This is great if you know you're gonna be working in a basement or in any type of moist environment. Something that you might run into with your airbrush is that water can sometimes come out before the paint. You'll end up with water on your shoes and this moisture trap will really help catch some of that. There is already a moisture trap attached to the actual compressor, but this is just an extra tool in case you're working in a really humid environment. You're gonna want some type of shop towel or rag. This is what I use to help scoop out any additional paint inside the cup. This is also what I cover up the needle with anytime I'm doing the backflow technique. And it's always great to have a towel nearby just in case. For troubleshooting purposes, this airbrush cleaning kit is really handy. What we have here is basically five different size brushes that are almost like pipe cleaners that you can run directly through the various parts of your gun. And this is really gonna help you track down any clogs and push them out that might be forming. I also like to keep an old airbrush needle nearby for cleaning purposes also. Anytime you have a clog forming somewhere, these are great to have nearby, an old bent one that you can run directly through your gun to try to help push out any clog that might be a little bit harder to find. Depending what airbrush model you're using, you might need a pair of pliers nearby. Sometimes they come with one, the Badger Patriot doesn't. And this is what you'll need in order to tighten up and loosen up some of the different parts from the actual airbrush. Things can get a little messy, so I always wear a pair of latex gloves also on my left hand anytime I'm airbrushing. For cleaning purposes, you're gonna want some type of airbrush cleaner. You can use the one that Angelus makes, or you can also make a homemade variation where you're gonna take something like roughly 90% water and mix in about 10% household cleaner, something like a Fabuloso, anything that doesn't have ammonia in it. In order to make sure that your paint is airbrush ready, it's really important that you run it through something like a mesh strainer. This is gonna catch any larger blobs of paint to make sure that those don't go into your gun and form any clogs along the way for you. I like to keep a lot of my paints airbrush ready for efficiency purposes, so I found these little two ounce bottles to be extremely handy. These little pop tops, squeeze it directly into your gun and you're good to go. I use this three inch Pro Tapes crepe paper for a lot of my masking purposes anytime I'm using vinyl stencils or something like that. Since it's three inches, it's nice and wide and it's gonna help you really build up some epic tape shields. I also like to use a heat gun or a blow dryer in order to help speed up the drying process, but it still is really important to make sure that you're giving ample dry time even with proper heat setting or blow drying. You still wanna leave around 20 minutes or so per coat if possible. And also, if space allows and things are starting to get a little bit more serious, it might be time to pick up one of these tabletop airbrush boots. We have a full review on this exact one that we use, but this is something that you're definitely gonna wanna consider if you're starting to airbrush a lot more regularly. So there you have it guys, that's a wrap on our full airbrush setup and all of the accessories that I use every single day. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully maybe you saw something that you didn't know, maybe you need, maybe that can help you out with your airbrush setup. These are all things that I've picked up over time, started to find out what you really need, what you need nearby in order to make sure nothing goes wrong and you're able to keep the train moving and keep things nice and efficient. Everything that we showed in today's video, we will try to have linked in the description down below. Go ahead and give this video a like if you guys haven't already. Make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you guys in that next video. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching another one of our videos. I'd love to know another little accessory that you guys use for your airbrush setup that we might not have featured in today's video. Also, don't forget all entries for the DCF video game contest are going to be due Friday, November the 13th. All right guys, get out there and just create.